very faint signal. <clears throat> but I'm so pleased I actually came down to find out where it is because it looks like a tiny, tiny little coin. You see it? Anything like it. Okay. It reminds me of, of a pattern because it's so so thin. But you know, I don't think it is. It's more like a, a coin. I'm gonna move away from the edge of the water. I think it is a pattern. It must be a pattern. Can you can you read? There's a chest there. Australia. Australia. Yeah, I can see the map of Australia now. There's a the yeah. crown is there. The crown it's, a, it, yeah. it's a Georgia crown. crown. Yeah. And it says Australia Military Forces. Oh, that's nice. So, can you see the other side? The other side. Sydney something rains rains forces here says Sydney no idea what Trump. it is
this object is indeed a button and it's an Australian military forces button. The Australian military forces was the official name of the Army of Australia back in 1916. And here's an article of the Australian Evening News from Sydney on the 24th of July 1912 when they were about to design the button to be created. This special button of Australian design has been approved for use on the uniform of the Commonwealth citizen soldiers. And here's another article, Lithgow Mercury, New South Wales, on the 2nd of August 1912. The now Australian military button is excellent. Apparently the government is going to advertise the map of Australia as fully as possible. It is a good idea, especially in the relation. The simplicity of the design is one of its recommendations. At a glance, it shows that Australia is under the crown. And then it goes on and on and on. And here's a good example produced in Sydney by Rainfords. So the same company that produced the one I found on the foreshore, although mine looks very damaged, as you can see there, you can barely tell it is a button. How did this button travel? all the way from Australia and he ended up here on the Thames foreshore in London. Do you think he would have been in the uniform of a military soldier coming back to England after World War I or perhaps even World War II? <laughs> I think I've just spotted a new ring. Can you see it? And also, there's something else up there. So that's there. It's an earring, but I don't think it's gold. So it's a keeper. And also there's something there. Let me see it. Uh, 
Oh, isn't that amazing? Uh, by the way, I don't think it's gold. Although, it feels really, it feels really, really heavy. Can you see the design? Um, it's, uh, I think it's an offering, not another offering. So shall we give it a bit of a wash? I think it's worth it. Quick, 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 the tide's coming. The tide's coming in. So they were both close by, as you saw earlier. Isn't it amazing? The style of it. it looks, you know, Roman or even pre-Roman in style. So I could say I have actually found one. <laughs> uh, that's that's incredible. So it looks like the top there got broken. Anyway, two great finds. So my view is these two finds are Hindu offerings. And they haven't actually been here for very very long. There you go. What have you got there? What have you got there? Uh, I can see George the Fifth. Oh, that's super. And I can see 1925. Yeah. I'm sure I think it's, it's a three. Three. Pens. Yeah, it should be three. Pens. Yeah. Lovely. Nice. Not a very strong signal. No? no. That should clean up quite nicely. Mm. Beauty. Can I show you what I've what I've got here? Yeah, of course. Hello. Oh hello. What have you got there? A ring. A ring. I picked it up and I thought it was a, a bit of a pipe or something. No, it is a ring. Oh, that's lovely. No hallmarks. No. But maybe if we do some cleaning we might be able to see something. Yeah. It's oh, very that's... very thin. Yeah, it's a nice nice ring. You know, I think I'm I think I can see something there. Probably not, but it is definitely a ring. That's a nice find. Yes. Well done. Thank you very much. telling me that it has a little bit of age to it. So 
what could that be? Britannian face seen right. Let's see if I can see a date before I turn over to reveal the portrait. Uh, not much I can see there in terms of the date. Unless you can see it. So let's turn it over. And it's a half penny George the fifth. Really, really good condition, as you can see there. Perfect. Okay, so as I was getting ready to move away from here, uh, we spotted something down there. Can you see it? So let's find out what it is. Oh, it's a Tempe. Tempe Elizabeth II. There you go, you can have that. <laughs> There's another little find here, and I think it might be the top of a, uh, a lighter. You can see it? So the cover that goes on top of an old um, cigarette light. So 1930s, 1940s maybe. It's very muddy in there. I'll we'll give it a good, good wash I think it might be it. Got something here as well. As I was picking it up, um, one part broke off from uh, the main object, and I'm not quite sure what it is. It could be part of a toy soldier or something. But uh, I can't film and inspect at the same time. So uh, it looks intriguing. So let's find out what it is. Now, could this be part of a very, very large key? Look at that.
and I nearly missed that dear This is Gia's the Dyer's used for as a, an oil lamp. So another Hindu offering. Spotted a coin eyes only. It's easy one. It's an easy one, isn't it? Look. Yeah. Looks like a foreign modern coin. Tide is coming in really fast, very, very fast. Let's see what this. What is this coin? Let's find out now. Oh, it looks like a Japanese. What a lovely coin. Offered another one. Can you see it? Could I be Japanese again? Well, I'm only guessing. It's Japanese. Another beautiful coin.